Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Game Reconsidered Podcast. I'm here with uh, William Schwilliam. Yeah, what's going on? And today we're going to be talking about our thoughts on Season 7. Yeah, so within Season 7 specifically, we're going to be talking about a couple things. Um, first thing we're going to be touching on is the cinematic introduction. And then we're going to touch on the battle pass, but not in full detail, or else we'd be here for all day. And then some of the map changes, new points of interest, and we might even touch on the new Infinity Blade. So yeah, I guess we'll start with the cinematic. How's that sound, Jason? Yeah, I love the cinematic. It was it's beautiful. It was much longer than the older cinematics, and it was much more... Honestly, when I first clicked on it, I was on my iPhone, and I thought, oh god, Fortnite just added ads, because I didn't think it was Fortnite. I was like, yeah, and this is... I accidentally clicked on a Christmas video or something. Because it really feels like a Christmas video. It is. It does what yeah. it's trying to do well. Yeah, real quick for anyone who might have not seen the cinematic, which is pretty much absolutely no one, but basically it opens on the Nutcracker skin decorating or doing the final touches on his Christmas house, which we actually see in the map. We'll touch on that later. And, um, yeah, so... And then it's actually a TV show that the... Um, Elf skin and uh, nog ops and stuff are watching, and then we see the glacier come on to the Fortnite Island, in which we have Sergeant Winter, I believe, leading the charge of planes, flying over the map, strafing the area of snowmen riding on the wings, which, yeah, that's basic. It's just yeah. what happened in the cinematic, but um, I really like it. With you, I, you, I had not watched it till about eight hours after you had told me about it and I still had the same thoughts. I was like, wait, am I in the right thing? Like what's going on? Like, even though you had told me what to expect, I was, but it was definitely really well done and I was really happy with it. Now, another thing is I just quickly point out the things I really liked about it. You have the Nutcracker skin and it first, when I saw the Nutcracker skin, I didn't recognize it as the Nutcracker skin. The Clash Shot skin is a very well-made skin to start with, and then adding that, like, traditional holiday animation style to it, you get yeah. a very unique and cool-looking item. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think I think having the introduction to the cinematic in Claymation was uh, definitely got the effect out of what they were looking for with it. Yeah. And there's the other thing about the... Uh, the animation thing is that it's actually two parts of the cinematic. You get the first half that's like the all Christmas and it's like getting into that holiday spirit that everyone's getting into this time of year. And the other half is, well, there's a giant iceberg and things we're getting strafed by airplanes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not going to be a very peaceful season. There's going to be a lot going on. And I think Epic definitely laid that out in that this isn't going to be a season where it's just going to be like, Every other week, there's going to be another Christmas tree. Oh, no. It, it, we're going to see a lot of Christmas stuff, but there's going to be actual things going on. And there's going to yeah, be- I think it's. I think this is going to be the beginning, as we were talking about, we had the last season, season six, was the end of the arc. This is going to be definitely the beginning of a new arc of conflict between the Glacier world and the original Fortnite world. Um, yeah, because, if anything, if anything, because, I mean... If you come in full on aggression like they did in the cinematic, you're gonna have these conflicts that we're gonna see and, and arise especially, especially throughout the to, season. Especially if you're going to a location as militarized as the Fortnite Island. I mean, if you were really think about it, this is a very militarized place. I mean, you do got pretty much just guns lying everywhere and most skins yeah. have some types of weapons on them. So it's it's not like these guys are entering like a peaceful land. They're entering Two warfaring civil- civilizations are now meeting up, and I think it, we might see something interesting. We might not. We might. We might both be wrong, and it's just a happy Christmas season. But I don't think we're. I think we're going to see a lot of, uh, of both sides: the uh, Christmas end of the traditional Fortnite. Yeah, we'll also keep in mind that we're going into um, all this. This season is, I think, lasting all the way to spring almost. Yeah, like if. I'm not sure how long it goes. Do you know exactly how no, long? I, it, from what I heard, it ends near February. Oh. All right. Well, so that's not as long as I thought. But yeah, it's still... Cool. We're going to have conflict if I'm not... Like, like that's just what I'm thinking here. 
Yeah. But uh, another thing to note about the cinematic is that it, it's it 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 shows off the older holiday skins and the newer holiday skins in a perfect transition. I mean, you got the you have old skins like Nod Ops, the elf skin, and then you have the newer skins like um, Sergeant Winter and mm-hmm. the Swashy Soldier, which I love the Swashy Soldier by the way, great. Skin. Yeah. But you have these newer skins, and they're both in the cinematic, and they're both given equal importance. I mean, you also have Crackshot as well, and that's, that's given them a decent amount of importance in the uh, cinematic. So it, they did a very well blend in, in weighing what's important and what's not in the uh, cinematic. Yeah. Yeah, they emphasized what we needed and filled in the rest of the, uh, the, the space with the just good well well done animations and it was definitely a well well done yeah cinematic so moving on from the cinematic uh map changes yeah so obviously we have this giant glacier that is run into the uh southwest cove coast uh or cove yeah and i do like that it hit where it did and it it fills in this area because we do now have a full map. Um, there's a lot more space. Although, definitely, the games were getting a lot faster, and I think the addition of a ton more space slowed them down a bit. However, people are still want to explore, so it's really fast right now, because there's all these new POIs that people are landing at and getting killed instantly. <laughs> yeah. That's basically what happened. But definitely having this different. space in the future will definitely slow down the games a lot, which is what was needed, because I'd get into the first circle, and there'd be 30 people left. And I'd be like, where did everyone go? Like, I, I, I was just like, I would get much lower kill games, because everyone would die so fast. Yeah. And, and I think it's good that the decision on their half with this whole <clears throat> expanding the map and, uh, and where they spend it as well. I mean, it's not like we're going to have a real stupid outcrop and coming off of Fatal Field, like, into the space. That would just be weird. And that's that would not be something we want. This is something nice, makes sense, it's reliable, it's good. Yeah. And also, let's touch a little bit on each of the little locations. Let's start first with the changes. A lot of places have been covered by snow, even transitioning in. Like, we got Viking Village and Shifty Shafts have been snowed over a little bit. But then we have Greasy Grove. Which is frozen. Which has completely been flooded and frozen. And, yeah, one thing that really pisses me off about that is you still get loot spawns in the frozen ice. So you could be there with a chest in the frozen ice. And it's just like, bro, really, I can't get that. Like, no, I it's, like that. I like that. it's just, it, it, it's like that teasing factor that kind of, like, pisses you off. But it's also kind of funny, too, for, like, just, it, it, it's, like, Epic is, I think Epic did that on purpose. Yeah, yeah, it definitely feels like Epic, like, the map's not going anywhere. We're just yeah. simply locking off parts. Yes, but, definitely. I think all of us expect Greasy to come back in the spring. It, yeah. It, it's not going to surprise anyone if it does, and if it doesn't, actually, I would be kind of surprised. Yeah. But, um, and also, I think Epic... They we had the whole storyline of Durberger going out of business, and I think the reason they ended up flooding Greasy is because Epic might not have known what to do with Durberger. So I think freezing up Greasy no, is just. I, I doubt that. I, I think the reason they froze over Greasy is because of its proximity to the cove. Well, yes, and obviously there's that. That, but I, what I'm saying is, it might have just been a bit of cover for some time to think about what to do with these, um, no, the whole no. storyline. I, I personally doubt that. I think Epic knows what they're doing with 3C. I think they've known what they're doing with Greasy because, as we all know, there's now a new Dur Burger in Retail Row. And yeah. to, to me, that just says the whole food truck storyline, if anyone was following that, that was where they're going with it. And I believe we're going to see a bit more from Greasy Grove because there's a whole lot of Durburger in the Battle Pass. Oh, yeah, we. That's going to. We're going to touch on a couple things, but that'll bring us to our next topic in a couple minutes. So let's talk about next the um, new, the new named locations and the, 
there's one unnamed location that we're going to hit on real quick. Um, so first we're going to do Frosty Flights, uh, the airport. I don't like it. I like it as a location. I love the design, everything about it, or where it's located. But it is such, it's, if anyone was on during, like, I think season five, no, season four. No, season five, season five, when they added Paradise Palms. It yeah. feels it feels like paradise. There's it's a good design location. It's but, like a third tilted. But people not really, it's more that people land there and it's just stupid how many people land there. Because they want the plane. I understand that. Yeah. But if I'm landing frosty because I mean I personally like landing frosty because of the military bunker. Not military bunkers, more of the research bases that are there. Yeah, there's a lot of loot in there, and it's actually cool to explore. You have Winch's uh, base there as well. Which, which by the way, I, I know you touched on this. We might see another greasy, or sorry, dusty divot operation going on in that area. <laughs> I think you said that earlier at one point. How there's all these research bases, and you expect to see some sort of, or we have that kind of feel at least. I, I have the feel, not really that as much as I expect it. It's the feel of early Dusty, and it's the feel of Paradise. And I honestly, I think it would be a great location if people weren't retarded about, like, literally entire, like, thirds of the map landing now. Well, like, that has been changed with something being added to the game, but... Yeah, we'll yeah. The sword. The sword. yeah. We'll, we'll touch on that. But I, I honestly don't think the sword hype's going to last very long. I think no, 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 no. Once it, I'm already sword, seeing it die down, actually. Once once the sword hype either dies or the sword itself is removed, Frosty is the next next big target. Yeah. All right, so yeah. the next named location is Happy Hamlet. It's uh, uh, it's like it, it, it it's like an elf Santa's workshop kind of village. It's very Christmassy. It's very Victorian. It's got the Tudor-style L all over the... All over the the town, it's kind of like an old, um, German. German. It feels old, like, yeah. Feels, it, that's what it feels like. It, it's a German. It feels like a German version of Lucky Landing. And my personal view on whether it's a good or good, bad location isn't. I honestly don't have one yet because I barely land there, and that I think that says something. It's not a great land place. Well, it, here's the thing. It's got loot. It's got. It's got space. It's just so far out of the way yeah. of any real battle bus that it's an impractical impractical it's, landing location. It's a larger lucky landing. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like, I don't know, I think they just wanted something to transition, to have a less abrupt transition from snow to grass, which, if that's what they were going for, they did it well with Happy Hamlet, but I just... Even there, I would disagree, because the snow doesn't end until lucky. So the transition location is lucky. Yeah, Which but I don't know. Puts I do Hamlet in this weird place of it's. I don't think that is true. Uh, yeah, I see where you're coming with that. All right. So and then it's, the, it's, we also have to think about it this way: it's the replacement to Flush Factor. That's which is a good replacement for Flush. That's right. Flush is gone. They replaced a industrial location, much like Salty Factories. If anyone remembers that. With yeah, dude, giant... I completely did not even realize that that was gone. Holy crap. <laughs> I really did. I love Flush. Yeah, dude, me too. I loved going to Flush. Like, if I had to grind challenges, I'd go there so I could do stuff, like, out of the way. But, dude, yeah, that that's... They did not... Happy Hamlet is not the replacement I was looking for with it's Flush, not, then. It's not good. I, I personally wouldn't mind if it disappeared in the spring or even earlier than that. Gets hit by Meteor Season 4 all over again. Um, <laughs> um, but the next yeah, anyway. Is Polar Peak. Polar Peak was absolutely useless until the storm. I'm just going to put that out there. It, why would I land on a location that's extremely tall? I'm surrounded by planes because you have two really good plane spawns on either side of the mountain. One's an airbase, um, which we didn't touch much on, but airbase are locations all around the map where there's three plane spawns, and they're a great place to land if you want a plane, but you're not in the snow area. And then there's frosty flights on the other side of the, the, the mountain. Do what do we call a situation where okay, I'm on the high ground, but you could have off, eight planes flying around you at one time. Yeah, and and if I'm on the high ground and try using the high ground, anyone can use the zip line with a shotgun and I'm dead. I mean, I yeah. always see it well if you have a heavy sniper and you're 
really, really, really camping. Like, really camping. But then yeah. again, any person with a sniper, the first place they're going to check is that map. Yeah. So, so here, here, here's my thoughts on it. I think it's definitely going to be a much better landing location as the snow melts farther down the mountain because the castle will provide more cover. It'll be lower ground. I mean, you'll still have the high towers up there. But, but then also, having it up high in the beginning of the season, being surrounded by a minimum of eight planes, but then I guess if you also have the one, the two, three down near Trog's Cave as well, so that can give you up to 11 to 12 planes. Like, it was definitely a chaotic place to be. Plus, once we got the sword being revealed, it was even worse because you had planes being strafed, or not planes being strafed, planes strafing, players all over the place, just just a mess. And, and the polar, polar, back- polar Peaks will definitely get better, I think, but it was, it was not it was great tough. in the introduction to it. Uh, another location that uh, we didn't touch on, but he uh, will just mention, is um, Trox Cave. Trox Cave, if you haven't seen our videos on it, is a small old cave where there's a guaranteed plane spot. It's very remote. Almost no players except on, like, mobile, and the only reason why people go there on mobile... Like, like here's the thing. You can land there, and you're almost assured no one will attack you until you get out of that cave. And the only time I've been attacked was I was on mobile once. I started my engine... And the mobile player got the engine indicator and came into the cave. But when he came into the cave, he was at such a disadvantage because I'm already in this cave. I already had the advantage of, of pretty much being back. I don't want to say backed up against a wall because then it makes it sound like a disadvantage. But there's only one way he could have come in. Yeah. So it's a great landing spot. And, and that causes even more issues when you talk about polar. Because I can drop there, get two chests. If I get lucky, I get like a sniper or an AR. Literally, just immediately go to Polar Peaks where everyone is scrounging around for loot and just wipe the place. Yeah. It isn't hard. I've done it. Not hard. Yeah. And you can also get a decent amount of mats if you farm everything out. Um, my friend, sure. he used the strat and he said he gets a plane, decent loot, and about 500 mats from Trog's Cave every time he leaves there. So, because there's also a big cove of trees or uh grove sorry of trees right above it so you can get a bunch of mats from there and then so yeah it's a definitely a great addition and then one place i'm not really going to touch on but i just want to mention is the cave that's going to melt out or something from underneath trog's cave like the mountain area off the side of the map i noticed it on like the first day when jason pointed out trog's cave to me i was like oh is this it or something and yeah, it wasn't, but it's made of that material the same as on Polar Peaks that will looks like it's going to melt out or be moved. Yeah. So then the final place is the Christmas house with the Christmas tree that spawns three presents or chests. Um, yeah, great landing location in my opinion. Uh, you're guaranteed at least one chest, I think. Um, and you can get up to three plus floor loot and internal mats and... It, it's a great landing location, especially for if you're in duos, because if you get three chests, that's enough loot to divvy up between the two of you. Yeah, yeah. And moving on from locations inside of the ice area, we also have airports, as we previously mentioned. Which yeah. Spice up, I, I personally don't like the way they're added. They, and I also don't like the zip lines. And I've been told I'm crazy for not liking the zip lines. I think they were unneeded, and I, I don't like them. But... I have to disagree with you there, because I, I like them. Because if you use them wrong, you're screwed. But if you know if you use them right to your advantage, then they can be a really tactical thing. Because I, I, get if, I get that, but a majority of what I see from the zip lines is people with, like, heavy pumps pulling up to a heated battle and instantly third-personing it. All that's I literally that's- how I use them, but okay. Yeah, all I see <laughs> as a weapon for third person, and personally, I don't like and don't do third person thing at all. So it's, I personally see them as more of a scum tactic, and the only point where I can see them being used actually with like a legit situation is if you're running from someone. Because honestly, or trying to rotate to the storm. Um, even in then, a... even then, the majority of zip lines are found near planes. So like, no. 
It's it's not even like moving away from the storm. It's you're just being strong because you're choosing that over the plane. Yeah. I mean, Unless you have some ethical code, like, I won't use the plane, which is also a strong weapon. I mean, if we're going to be honest, it really is. It's yeah. pretty hard to hit, and it's, it's pretty strong. And if you don't want to use the... I mean, I personally think that, that they aren't needed. Is, is yeah. I, I think a much better replacement would have been snowballs or something else, at least. Maybe skiing. Yeah. All right. So I think we definitely touched on... Locations enough. Uh, battle pass. We're just gonna go. I think over a couple of the main things. We'll go over the main skins. So we've got the let's see the Lynx. We've got Zenith. We've got the next skin would be Sergeant Winter, and then we've got Powder. I think it is. Um. Yeah, we got Powder, and then after that we've got I think yeah we got Trog, the Yeti, and. We've got the onesie uh, with the Dirt Burger sleeping wear, and then the Ice King. So yeah, let's start on the two, um, the Lynx and Zenith. Yeah. Um, yes. Again, both are good at higher tiers. I like them. Really no big complaints. I mean, yeah, I mean, the I think they're both really well done. Zenith, his first stages, I'm not a big fan of them. But I mean, once he gets tiered up, Definitely a cool looking skin, and they're definitely great tier one skins. Um, but yeah, I think it's cool that they both have stages as well that you can unlock as opposed to just having one of them. But like yeah, I think yeah, they're well done. I mean, imagine if DJ Llama had stages, that would be that would be beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Next we have Sergeant Winter. He Aww. is like badass Santa. All wrapped up into this strong thing until he gets teared up. Uh, yeah, I don't like tier- him in the base tier. I think he looks a little bit like Angry Santa. And Biker Gang Santa. Gang. I understand why I put to it. Certain people would be like, yeah, it's cool. I'm just, no, not really. Not my thing. Um, I mean, we already have a lot of badass skins this, in this battle pass. And we do have onesie as well, which is another just absolute legend skin. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't really see a need for, like, okay, we have Biker Santa. Okay, we have really strong robot ski dude. Yeah. And we have robot superhero girl. And we have the king of literal ice. Yeah. Like, All right. I don't really see why we also needed an Edgeward Santa. Um, but... I- I do like it though. I like the middle tier. It's a cute little little face yeah, there. I love that, and I also love the llama because he looks all pearly. Yeah, he's just like, he's just like, it, it's like taking a man, and then making him like, Iron Man, like Transformer gear, like something like that. You put him on, and he's just like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I really like his tears. I don't like him in his data. Uh, next yeah. one, one powder. Two. Not that's totally not in order, but I want to talk about onesie next. Well, no. the, the, the trend. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Skins, cool skins. Onesie is the epitome of me during the winter break, so I love it. <laughs> Who doesn't just sit in their bed, like majority of their winter break, and just sleep? Yeah, it's snow outside and snow is cold. Very it's... cold. Yeah. So onesie skin. There's been leaks from it. Gosh, all the way back in season five, right? No. I th- I don't know, maybe season six, but there were leaks out for it for a while, and yeah. everyone was so hyped to get it in the shop because I I remember when the leaks came out, and then they all just kind of fell, and the hype was gone, and then when we got it in this battle pass, people were like so excited again because they got the onesie skin, but yeah, and, and but I I was I was personally also stoked to see if I could get it. Because, I mean, it, it literally is, I think, almost everyone on winter break. Like, and, yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I, I definitely like how about, it was done. Another thing about this skin is, it's another, a big theme of this season is greasy glow stuff. I mean, there's a lot of dirt burger, a lot. I mean, yeah. we did it last season, we did have a decent amount of tomato head, but nowhere near the scale of dirt burger we're getting right now. 
I yeah. Get. It's kind of, I think it means something, but I'm not really sure what. I don't know what to expect. Yeah, we don't want to make this too much of a predictions video, but because there's really not much to expect right now. We don't really know where to go with it, but all right, yeah, so then we got the tier 47 powder skin. I think there's another name to it, but I don't, like, an, another aspect of the name, but I don't know what it is right now. Yeah, I that. think this is going to be a tryhard skin of the season. I could see that, but I love it. It's I do. a pilot skin. And it yeah, I love so it so much as well. It's, it, it's literally, it, it, it's what you'd expect from a snowboarder. No, I think the tryhard skin of this season is going to be tier 4 ice skin. Mm, or onesie. <laughs> no, I don't think onesie is going to be any tryhards. I would laugh that actually becomes a tryhard skin. And then, All the streamers rocking that onesie outfit. All right, next we got Trog, the Yeti oh, with a lazy eye. I love this skin. Me this, too. This, this skin that, I mean, I love his cave and I love everything about him. He's just... <laughs> He's so goofy looking, you know, like no, you can't no. take him seriously because of his lazy eye, but he looks so intimidating like otherwise, no, you know what I mean? The thing about him is you get this impression when you hear Mo Mountain Myth, uh, is it Mountain Myth or Mountain Legends? One of the two. That's the yeah, I don't know. You get the idea, okay, we're going to get like an abominable snowman and he's going to be like spooky scary, right? Well, no. mm -hmm. And then you get that. You just get that and then his glider is literally a penguin. Like, if anyone remembers the game Learn to Fly, it is it's just that. And it's beautiful. And it's yeah. exactly what I would want without knowing that's what I want. <laughs> so, yeah. It's Trog, definitely a well-done skin, and I'm very excited to get that once I do. And then the final skin on the Battle Pass is the Ice King, uh, the Tier 100. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not much to say about it. It's a really, really cool-looking skin. Especially, uh, all, all of his tiers are really cool looking. My favorite's got to be gold one, but... Uh, I, would, I would argue the contrary. I, I would say that's my, the only one I don't like. I like his tier 3 the best. I do like the red one as well. Uh, I'm between uh, tier 3 and 4, red and... The tier 3 would be the, um, the uh, ice, the actual ice. No, I thought that was tier 2. Uh, that's tier 2. Tier 2 is the, um, the red one. All right. Well, whatever. Well, the, it's overall it's good skin, <laughs> tier one hundred. I think it's good having that as the tier one hundred. But there's also some other skins we could have had. No, no, no. It's better than Dyer. I I'm willing to take it simply because it's better than Dyer. I mean, well, I yeah, it's easily better than Dyer. There's no dispute there. I would, I would have loved if we had tier one hundred Trog and it like upgrades to actually become like just flat out. Reality. Yeah, fully hairy and like actually intimidating. But. But I'm happy with what we got. Oh yeah, I'm. Nope. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I am very happy with this. But I, I also expect. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we had gotten a different skin as tier 100. No, nah, no. Nah. All, All right, right, yeah. So, so a new hold up. A new thing introduced was weapon wraps, weapon skins. What do you think about them? Just briefly, not too much. I like them. Uh, I don't like how most of them seem to only really work on one thing perfectly. Yeah. Like, the winter camo works on a decent amount of things, but on a decent amount of things, it looks completely disgusting. Like the six shooter, any camo on the six shooter besides the red camo looks like I literally vomited on my gun. <laughs> so it's there's yeah, some like really some of the and like some of them, like the winter camo looks great on the normal pistols, but it looks trash on the other pistols. Which yeah. is like you should be able to customize it more specifically that you have like that awesome. because. Also, I think I speak for everyone, where if I had a bazooka, no, it's not called a bazooka, RPG, or a um, quad quad launcher, or even a uh, minigun with a camo, it would be beautiful. Like, a red bazooka, not bazooka, or a quad, would be beautiful. Or a, yeah. a winter camo minigun, that would just be, I would love that. Yeah. Just having a little bit of texture from the basic would be pretty nice. All right, so then just a couple more things. We have two new pets. We have Ramirez, I think, or Ramirez, the dog. And we have, oh, no, that's the hamster. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, the hamster is Ramirez. Oh, I, I hate that. Why don't we have a cat pet yet? It's 
weird. We now have yeah, I would much rather hamster. the cat. No, we got a wolf and a hamster instead of a cat. Why? I'm okay with the I, wolf. Yeah, wolf the wolf cool. is cool. The wolf, I really like. Um, He definitely looks like an elder. Really cool. I like his ice skin. And I really like the Skull Trooper version of him. Yeah. That's I, I, really cool. I, I don't like the emo uh, hamster. <laughs> oh, what, the black one? No. Like, any of the hamsters. All the mm. lurkers. No. Yeah, I, 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 I would agree with you there. Definitely <laughs> wish would get a cat instead of the hamster, but... No, no, I would take anything, actually. I just rethought this. Anything over the hamster. We could have gotten, like, a literal pile of trash, and I would have took it. Because this hamster, here's the thing. Even if I'm a hamster pet lover, it's it's not, like, my ha- Like, no hamster has a little weird little tuft of hair that looks retarded. Like, yeah. It's, it just doesn't... It feels like it's trying to have sass, but it's a hamster. Yeah, it, it's, it should not... I mean, I like... I like the fact that we have pets. It's a cute little, it's a cute little thing, but it's just, the pets, the pets are supposed to be, like, a fun little companion, not a soft little plush toy that you play with, you know? No, not even that. It's not, it's supposed to be, yeah, I agree, a soft little companion. That isn't a soft little companion. That looks like something that, when I die, is going to curse me out in my sleep. And it's not going to stop yelling at me until I literally become Victor Royale every game. Although, I do have to say, I like the animations that it's done with it, how it runs in the hamster ball when you run. That's pretty cool. But I just, I, overall, besides that, I just, I'm not a big fan of it. I don't like it at all. I, I, would, I would take anything, even if we got emoticons over it, I would take it, because it's, it's bad. <laughs> like, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. I mean, All right, is there anything else that you wanted to touch on? No, nah, I was just about to ask you the same. <laughs> I'm trying to think. There's not really much else to talk. Oh, the sword. Duh. Yeah, the sword. The sword. I love it. It does a lot of damage. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah. I mean... <laughs> I personally still haven't gotten any chance to play it, but which really sucks. But I have seen gameplay. Seen I've been it. with you playing with it. <laughs> but yeah, it, it it's really good. I think it's good. It should not stay in for long though. No, I think it should stay. I think it should stay for a while. Cause it's it's a reason. The hype for it is definitely dying down though. Yeah, it's like, a reason why polar peak though. And honestly, polar peak needs a reason to land there. Or else it will die out of its own location. I mean until polar peak becomes an actually good location, I believe it should stay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's about it. Yeah, so I guess we'll see you guys next time. Um, also, Good. keep in tune because we put this up on me and Will's personal channels. We put this up on the main channel. But it might be coming to Apple Podcasts. We've been looking yeah, with that. if we can get our one friend to figure that out. So and We don't expect anything, but we really like it through the Apple Podcasts. And uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, go check out our other videos if you haven't done so. And, and like links, and yeah, links, links to both of our channels will be down in the description. As well and, as everyone else that is part of the Gaming Reconsidered team. Yep. Yeah, see you guys next time.